Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick with a video game review, which is going to be rare. Um, I'm not much of a gamer. I mean, I play, you know, I play video games, but I don't play them for like two hours at a time. I usually don't. Uh, it's usually like 45 minutes, or and I'm done. That's why I uh, I usually play like I love playing MLB the Show because you can play like one nine inning game and it's like takes like 45 minutes to an hour and that's it. Then I just shut it off. Um, but I felt compelled to do a review once I finished L.A. Noir because it was extremely unsatisfying for at least the ending part of the game for me. Um, and I figured, why not? You might as well, you know, share my thoughts here. Uh, it's sort of a mix. You're a detective in, like, the 1950s in L.A., so it's kind of a mix of, like, a Red Dead, Grand Theft Auto kind of game and, like, maybe Heavy Rain, I guess. Love, he love uh, Red Dead and Heavy Rain. Um, both of those are great. Elena Noir, you know, they use, like, a motion capture technology that they really hyped up the game with um, when you have to interview people and you have to, you know, figure out if they're lying or telling the truth, which I, I didn't find that that difficult. Um, uh, I thought it was actually pretty easy to do. Um, you just got to make sure when, you, when the person's, like, lying, you have evidence. So that was fine. I didn't mind that. Um, and also you gotta, you investigate a crime scene and you, uh, you know, you gotta find evidence and stuff. All that stuff, you know, it was really interesting the first 40 times you do it. But another crime scene, another, you know, person to interview, and it's like, alright, enough. Um, now the game, I'll give the game credit that the partner, if you have a partner, the game will let you skip over the driving thing to speed some things up. Or, um, the game would, you know, do some interesting things where uh, you have to go like find a guy in, in a like a abandoned like church, so some at least some interesting like atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, game had like multiple f war flashback you know, backstory plus the newspaper story that everything was going to collide. Um, so the game really felt like you know things were really moving you know moving towards something something pretty good. Um, but again, I was getting annoyed in, you know, at the repetitiveness uh, of p pretty much um, of everything else. Um, so the game would keep me like interested with like a new thing that would like keep me going, basically, which I knew wasn't a good thing. I shouldn't you know feel that way playing the game. Um, but then three quarters through, your character uh, Cole Phelps gets like completely screwed over, demoted, um, you know, and like disgraced. And you know all these people that have done this to you. So I'm like, so I was completely re-energized in the game. I'm like, okay, this last section, I'm going to get revenge on all these, you know, all these assholes that did this to me. And um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Then you play as somebody else. And not because your guy dies. Just because the game, look, or he needs his help, so you play as this other detective that was also in the war with your character. But, the thing is, I would have been fine if it was like a switch over for one, like one, you know, mission, and then back, and maybe even back and forth the rest of the game. But, you just stop playing as the original guy, and just play as this guy. So it's like 80% of the game, you're with this guy, you, you, you grow to, you know, care a little bit, as much as you can care about a character in a video game, at a story, at, at you know, what was going on. Um... And then you just switch. And you don't come back to him. So it was like 80% with one guy, 20% with this guy. And then the whole like last couple of missions, you know, you don't get to kill any of the bosses. You get to shoot the one guy who looked like John Noble, might have been John Noble in the leg. Uh, John Noble from Fringe. Like, that was sort of satisfying. But... Uh... Like, the, the doctor that's been giving everyone, like, morphine, the firebug guy kills him. And you don't get to kill the fire the firebug guy. Somewhat, it happens, but it happens, like, off-screen. So there's no, like, boss battle. You fight in, like, tunnels and water. The most difficult part of it was walking through water at the end of the game to get to, like, a ladder on the other side of the room. That was it. And then they... And then... And this is a spoiler they kill off the original guy, the guy who played 80% of the game with. But you spent just far en enough time away from him that now you don't you, you don't care about him anymore. And they try to do like a Red Dead thing where it was kind of like poignant, 
you know, like, oh, look, he sacrificed himself, and, you know... Um, and they also did the flashback in the war to find out what happened where a bunch of, like, children and, like, women were just, like, burned alive and stuff like that. So they tried to do this combination of, like, some shocking, uh, you know, backstory, some shocking revelation, and then some, like, poignant ending. And it just does not work. You don't get any retribution in anyone. You know, it's a video game. I want to beat the shit out of people. You know? But no. We don't get that here. Thank God I didn't play seventy dollars. I played forty dollars for it, and I guess it was worth forty bucks. But uh, I don't know. That was just my little like rant about it. If you feel differently, let me know. Um, you know, just I don't know. So stupid. Um, I mean, games do have that problem where like an ending of a game can't be completely satisfying. Um, uh, but when it is, you know, it really works. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Alright, that's it for this. Um, I'm playing Arkham City right now, which is an absolute monster to get through. Especially for me. Uh, I got like, I got like eight or ten, like, side missions going on with the main story, plus all of Riddler's bullshit. Yeah. But, uh, that's a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, you know, that's it. Alright, I'm gonna be back tomorrow with, uh, the Dexter Walking Dead review stuff this week. Maybe do a Blu-ray review again, hopefully. Uh, and then we're filming our Spielberg 90s video next week, and so that'll be up, uh, next week at some time. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Ellie Noir. A solid 8. Drops to a 6.5. Because of its stupid ending. Let me know what you thought. Adios.